everyone, this is Atijit Das. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use readiness probe in your Kubernetes cluster. So readiness probe is important because sometimes it may take some time for your pod to be actually be able to serve requests. So if the pod is actually not ready and your request gets redirected to that pod, then it will simply not work, right? So you need a mechanism which conveys Kubernetes that the pod is actually ready when it is ready. And that's where readiness probe comes in. So here is a visual representation of how readiness probe works. So as you can see, the pod on the right side, here it takes some time to load up. And during that time, what the readiness probe will do is it will probe and it will fail until it is actually fully ready and when it is ready only then a service can redirect request to that pod so assuming you have set it up correctly then the readiness probe always ensures that a pod is only ready to serve requests when it is actually ready so i'm going to show you how to implement readiness probe in your kubernetes service through a live example if you are absolutely new to Kubernetes, then I suggest to go through the introductory video first and I will put a link to it in the description. So in my case, I have an HTTP server which is running and if you just access this server, you just simply get this simple web page. So this HTTP server is running on a local Kubernetes cluster and I will show you how to implement readiness probe inside it. So before you watch this video, there are some prerequisites. So I'm assuming you know a little bit about Kubernetes as well as Docker because both of them are going to be used in this video. So this is the application and I'm going to show you the code behind it. So this application is simply an HTTP server running on a Go backend. So I've written this server in Go language. So as you can see there is this main function which calls this handle requests function. And in this function, we are basically handling these endpoints here so you know if you have just this http dot handle from slash home page that means if you simply go to the local host this home page handler will get executed and this home page is this function where it simply writes welcome to the home page to the response writer okay so this part is the simple serving of request so why readiness probe is used so if this application uh, you deploy it in Kubernetes cluster, this is a very simple application. Whereas if your application needed to do some extra work before it is actually ready to serve requests and that extra work takes time, then you will need some mechanism to tell Kubernetes that your application isn't ready to serve requests. So this extra work can be in the form of loading some database or loading some file or writing to some file. It can be anything and it may need lots of seconds or minutes before it's actually fully loaded. So this is why there is a mechanism in place in Kubernetes where you can declare that a Kubernetes pod isn't ready to serve and you do that using readiness probe. So before I get into the details of how it's implemented, I'll first show you how this application is dockerized and deployed in Kubernetes. So this is just one single main file and its corresponding Docker file looks like this. So it's basically copying the file and creating a binary and simply uh, executing that binary. So using this Docker file, you can create a Docker image and that Docker image, you can add it to a deployment file like this. So as I said, I am assuming you know what is Docker and what is Kubernetes deployment and what is a Kubernetes pod. So I'm not going to go into all the details of what is a deployment file, but this is how a deployment file looks like. You have this kind deployment, you have some metadata and inside spec, you give a template of the pod uh, inside which your container runs. And here I'm giving my image here, image of my application. So inside that, you give entry to the readiness probe. So this is the important bit for this video. So here uh, under readiness probe, you have to give a probe type so that the readiness probe will probe at that address. So this probe type can be an HTTP endpoint, it can be a command or it can be TCP. So in this, in my case, I'm giving this path as slash up in this port 10,000 and some other settings 
So when I deploy this deployment file and the pod is created, the readiness probe probes at this path with these values. So basically after every second, it will keep on probing again and again. And uh, if it gets successful once, then it will declare that pod to be available. And only after that, uh, a Kubernetes service will be able to redirect requests to this pod, not before that. So this is how you add readiness probe into the deployment YAML file. And next I'm going to show you how you actually implement this path. So coming back to my main program, here I have this handle request which main calls and here we basically are serving the request. But before I do that, I'm creating a variable, an atomic variable, where I initially store zero value. And then I'm going to simulate the things that have to be done before a pod is actually ready. And currently I'm simulating by using this function here. And this function takes this uh, ready value. And here I'm just simply simulating the time taken to actually uh, be ready by simply just making it asleep for 20 seconds. So in this area, you might be doing uh, loading of some data, which may take time. And only after this, I am storing one in this ready atomic variable, okay? Uh, to convey the message that it is actually ready. So how this variable is used is, I have this another hand, handler here, which has this endpoint of slash up, which is same as given in this readiness probe. And uh, I have this handler here, which is an implementation of this struct, which I've defined here. And this struct has this atomic value. I need it because I need to access the value of this atomic value inside my handler here. So if I go to this handler, which is up and running handler here. So uh, the readiness probe will will be hitting this function, okay, whenever, whenever a pod starts. So every time this gets hit, it will be checking if this ready value is actually one or not. Okay, because I showed you before, it, it only gets one when the pre-processing step is done. And in this case, I'm simulating that by simply time.sleep. So it will check if it is one, then only it will return status okay. Otherwise it will return status service unavailable, which means the readiness probe will not declare the pod to be ready to uh, get requests. Okay, so this is one of the uh, simplest end-to-end -end example to show how the readiness probe works. So what I'm going to do is, is go through all the steps, which is first we create a Docker image of this application, then we push the Docker image to Docker Hub. I'm assuming you know what is Docker Hub. It is basically a registry of Docker images so that you can pull the images and run it as container whenever you want. So I'm going to create the image, push the image, then deploy this deployment to my locally running Kubernetes cluster in Docker. So you will need to have Docker installed as well. So in my case, I'm running Docker for desktop, which has a Kubernetes cluster as well. So all these steps I've included in this, this script file. So first is this command, uh, docker build, where you build it, then you push, and you will need a Docker Hub account. So I'm pushing it to my account. You can push it to your account. Then I'm simply applying this deployment file. And I already have applied this service file, which actually exposes, exposes the port so that we can access, access the website here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is simply bash commands.sh, which will execute all the steps I mentioned. So now it is building the Docker file. I'll put a link to this repository's GitHub in the description so that you can go through it when you have time. And now it is pushing and it has created. So let's do a watch get pods. So here you can see this pod is created. 
but it is not ready it is you know showing zero out of one and it will sleep for 20 seconds and then only it will show it to be ready right so right now it will not receive any requests even if we want and now it is showing ready as you can see it is one by one okay so now if we go we will see it running whereas let's say if i do kubectl delete pod if i delete it and now if i want it, it doesn't show it so if i do a watch again it is not ready which means if i try to go to this address it won't work but after 20 seconds it will make it ready as you can see here and now it works right so this is an end-to-end -end example of how to implement readiness probe in kubernetes so i showed this example in go you can basically do it in whatever language your application is written in and there are basically total four files which i covered so this main file which where you actually have the http server running and i run this fake function in a separate thread so that it can convey us when uh, it is actually ready then I have this docker file which actually dockerizes the application. Then I have this deployment file which actually can be used to deploy our application and a service file to expose our application. So if you have any particular questions about this then feel free to ask in the comment section and I will put a link to the GitHub repository of this project so that you can go through it. Thank you. So one more thing, there is another concept called liveness probe which can be implemented exactly the same way as readiness probe and I will leave that as an exercise. So the difference is readiness probe tells when a pod is ready to serve requests. So Kubernetes will not redirect any request to that pod until it is actually ready. But as liveness probe, it tells Kubernetes if the pod is actually alive or dead. So if a liveness probe says no, that it is not alive, then the Kubernetes will simply restart the pod. So in that case, it is very important to uh, have a decent value for this initial delay seconds. Otherwise, if you set it to a very low value, then almost always it will, it will just think the pod is dead and it will keep on restarting. So that's the main difference and I leave it as an exercise to implement liveness probe the same way I have implement, implemented readiness probe.